Hi, I'm Gadali Pasternak. I'm going to give a little chat about uh, building a crowd AI system for, for game development. A little background on me, I worked in television commercials, massively multiplayer games, and for the last 20 years, okay, I'm old, uh, I've worked at Boston Dynamics and Mock Technology, uh, with a lot of that time spent on a product called DI Guy, a character animation system used in the visual simulation and industry, and I've also worked on uh, rendering engines, particle systems, and all that jazz. So a little overview, what we'll talk about. Um, so from like sort of low level to high level, uh, uh, basic animation system features that you have to think about, uh, social forces, we'll talk about a little about what that means, um, navigation meshes, which you definitely need, um, Area tagging so that characters can be smart. Path planning so that you can use those area information. Low level behaviors and then high level finite state machines um, where all of the decision making happens. To start, you're going to need to have the ability to tell a character to go to a location uh, and sort of steer autonomously to that spot. You'll probably want to be able to control the speed that the character goes at and so you can say run or walk, and you know in this case I just told those guys a little quick script to go from one side um, of the locations to the other. So pretty straightforward. So the next piece you'll need is a social forces model. Uh, the first one of these that I know of is, is called Boyd's by Craig Reynolds, uh, and it was built in 1986, and effectively it was simulating like a flock of birds. Uh, I think there's a bunch of sample code also in OpenSteer and there's Java applets but effectively once you have the ability to have your little characters get to a point you need to do something with that. So in this case those characters have all steered around each other and you know still going to the spot on the other side of the street but you know not walking right through each other and that's pretty important for a crowd system. So the next piece of the puzzle uh, that you're going to need is a physics system. Uh, you're going to need to be able to do fast ray tests, line of sight tests, um, for things like, you know, how far can I go in this direction in case of an emergency. And also you're going to need uh, Z-clearance tests uh, for navigation mesh generation. At least that's the big thing I found was that I needed to be able to kind of say, hey, in this spot can I walk here? Or are there vertical polygons? Um, so you need a robust physics system because that is going to help your AIs make decisions about the world. So navigation mesh generation. Um, this is pretty much a massive topic on its own. Uh, there are a number of SDKs that do this, such as Recast and Detour, uh, Path Engine. There used to be uh, Kinapps, which got turned into Gameware, which I think has now been end of life by Autodesk, um, but the idea is effectively that you are trying to build a spatial representation of walkable and unwalkable uh, sp spots. And that's where like a C clearance check comes in and you have to sort of walk through the entire world and, you know, figure out, can I go here? You have to figure out, are you going to do, you know, a full 3D representation or 2D representation? And uh, you sort of wind up with, you know, the simplest version of this is a little grid that um, companies love to ask questions about. Can you, you know, get from here to here uh, in this in this grid and you do a depth first search or a star? So uh, this is a big topic. Lots of PhD theses get written about, you know understanding a uh, generic polygon soup of your environment and building a representation around it. Um, so in my case, for this system, it does a lot of checks and then it welds areas together. Initially it was smaller, but it had to get a lot bigger to make uh, different customers happy. So we wound up with a quad tree representation um, so that you know big flat areas uh, could get merged together and use less memory. So that's kind of what you're seeing here. But big topic.
Next system that you want to think about is area tagging. Uh, now, for pedestrian AI, that might be crosswalks and sidewalks. For a military AI, that might be cover points and, you know, uh, ingress, egress, I'm not sure, but, you know, cover points definitely comes up, uh, and other, like, attack points. So, so some way to, like, put these locations into the mesh so that characters can behave intelligently when they need to. So the solution for us was this paintbrush. It got used for populating the crowds, but also for tagging regions. You know, here I'm specifying that this is a sidewalk. And I can, you know, erase, expand, and, you know, update the navigation mesh, and the characters can then do intelligent things with that painted data. There are other ways of tagging information, you know, if you have something like OpenStreetMap, sometimes there'll be like regions. Uh, this was a cool uh, way to do it. Uh, I think in some systems maybe you would use uh, polygons that were placed inside the level in 3D Studio Max. It really depends upon your art pipeline, but it's you know, an important next piece. It's path planning. I instructed this crowd of people that was sort of standing around that they wanted to go and hang out in the blue region on the left. And so all of those guys now have to generate path plans and get across. Now, they're not doing something super intelligent uh, in terms of uh, making good choices about where they should cross or how they should cross. So let's give them some more information. So I've had a crosswalk and now we see and told the uh, agents that they prefer walking in the crosswalk. And so now they're going to do something a little bit more intelligent. They view the points in the crosswalk as a little cheaper to cross. And so that's where they're going to progress through. And for my last trick, I've fed in that there's a red area that they really don't want to go through either. And uh, maybe it bomb went off, something interesting happened, and so now they will jaywalk a little bit, but they will very intentionally avoid this. So all these are little hints to an A-star path planner, and you know, you can do things, and a lot of games have, uh, you know, will do logic based upon the slope, mud, uh, you know, any game that does like strategic thinking or, 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 or planning needs to have path planners that can understand terrain, make good choices, and have goals and desires. Um, so that's that's path planning. It, again, giant topic. You need the navigation mesh to represent the data that you're trying to uh, go across, and then hints to the AI about what's going to be, what's going to work best. So low-level behaviors. Uh, so I'm going to give this guy an instruction. And everybody starts to flee. And they're just kind of running, they're doing a ray trace and they're running as far as they can from this individual. Uh, so, so there's a whole bunch of different like low-level behaviors uh, we wound up coding. Uh, traveling, which you saw, they were just walking along this path and trying to avoid each other, fleeing, pursuing, wandering. These are the kind of things that you want to be able to do without um, having to like give orders to your characters on a frame-by-frame -frame basis. You kind of want C++ to just sort of handle a decent amount of this logic and let it be pretty fast. So after all of that, so you, you've got your path planner, you've got your animation system, you've got your physics engine, you can do line of sight checks. Uh, how do you put it all together? You, you can pursue people, you can flee people, you have a little C++ system that lets you shoot at folks. How do you build the sims? You know, that, that's your next piece of game tech that you, you're, you're sitting thinking about. Like, and so the answer there, oh, that was funny, uh, is <laughs> You need like a high level finite state machine, a behavior tree, something that can 
make those decisions when you do all of those when, when to do all the things that you just managed to build. You know, it's not really super easy to represent in C++ because things take time to do. And that's state machines aren't so fun to, to write in C++. I mean, I think they've recently added coroutines, but when I built this infrastructure, I went with Lua and built a whole editing infrastructure system around hierarchical finite state machines for making these decisions. So explaining everything here would take an hour long talk, but the basic idea is that each character has their own little Lua global object and a coroutine. And so effectively they can pause and resume scripts. So if you say, hey, I want to travel to this point, you tell C++, let me know when I get there. And you go to sleep and you wake up in the same script exactly where you left off. Now, other things can happen. You can get, you know, there was an explosion nearby. There was, somebody sent me a message. So you have message handlers and you can kind of say, hey, when I wake up, let me, let me know. I'll, I'll look at the messages that I got. Uh, did I successfully get there or did something else happen? And so with the, that fundamental tool and being able to, you know, have messages, edit this in real time, debug it. In fact, I can take a look, you know, and expose the internal variables that the character has. Um, you can build sort of a rich experience for these little AIs. I mean, it's not a super complex thing. Uh, the Sims wrote a great, have, there are a whole bunch of great um, papers on the Sims, which I sort of base some of this work on, where effectively the characters, you know, gradually get hungry or angry. They find places to do certain things. I can tell them to all go pray at some points, um, or I can tell them to just cross the street, find some place to go, you know, go home, come back, you know, the whole pattern of life can be built up with a Lewis State machine and all of the pieces beneath it. So I think those are the main topics I wanted to talk about. You can, I could easily spend, yeah, a much longer discussing it. I don't know why the frame rate just dropped. I guess I have to look into the optimization, but uh, these are sort of the basic building blocks for building a crowd AI uh, that runs real time. That can, you know, work in a game. Uh, it's it's years of work. Um, I worked on this system with a bunch of bunch of other engineers, uh, a bunch of artists, and uh, you know, we even had funding for doing pattern of life uh, work from the from one of the uh, Department of Defense. So really cool stuff to work on and think about and um, it's really complicated. I mean the there's a little AI system for state machine for crossing that street for figuring out hey I'm gonna wait till the light changes and when it and when it's safe to go and you know just things like that actually like they're really hard to write. Um, the, there's lots and lots of little weird edge cases and understanding what's going on and trying to care to get the characters to look reasonable, it's all, you know, pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty time consuming. And, you know, you, you're trying to get people to, to believe in what they're looking at. So thanks for listening.